And she starts to realize, and she gives him back his mask, gives him back his dignity in a way. I think it's very nice if a whole portion of the audience wished that she'd stayed with the Phantom. But I, I mean, we've got this very splendid, attractive, young leading man who she must finally end up with. It's only reasonable. An American actor, Steve Barton, plays that third role in this strange triangle as the man Christine loves instead of the Phantom. Find a way to keep going. Crawford, by the way, will not unmask himself for publicity shots, only in the theater, where the audience will finally see the grotesque makeup beneath his mask near the end. But all those story elements we've seen wouldn't necessarily add up to a hit if they weren't told through more than two hours of Andrew Lloyd Webber's music. That, according to director Hal Prince, is what ultimately sold the show to him. Romance. The romantic musical. It's been a long time. Andrew and I share an enormous affection for uh, South Pacific, the musical, and for Some Enchanted Evening. And when Andrew first played for me, all I ask of you, just the end of the first act, I felt a kind of romantic stirring. I felt surrounded by something theatrical and larger than life and extremely romantic, and I thought that hasn't happened to me in a long, long time. Let me be your freedom Let daylight dry your tears I'm here with you beside you To guard you and to guide you in advance to the success of Phantom. Before the show's opening night in London, a recording of this song had already made the British record charts, which was music to the ears of producer Cameron McIntosh. There were three top ten hits out of the show, which I don't think he's ever had before. And of course, the album has sold uh, hundreds of thousands of, of records, many of which have been bought by people who have yet to see the show because the waiting list is so long. It's costing $8 million to bring the Phantom to New York, half of that amount for costumes and remodeling to create the spectacular stage illusions. Slowly, gently, night unfurls its splendor. Grasp it, sense it, tremulous and tender. The show is virtually guaranteed to run well into the next decade. The hallmark, so far, in Lloyd Webber's phenomenal streak of hits. What's thrilling at the moment is that the public is now into the form of storytelling through continuous music. They're almost demanding it. And listen to the music of the night.
And thanks to the music that Lloyd Webber has given him, the Phantom has finally become something he never was before, a true leading man. Unlike the other Phantoms who have come and gone in popular entertainments, there is no end in sight to this one. When I saw this production in London, I knew it was going to be blockbuster over here. I did not know the extent of the advanced ticket sales. And unless you're one of those holders of one of those tickets, will you ever get a chance to see this thing in the United States? If you want premium seats, you should plan months and months ahead because the sale is so huge that the U.S. will have elected a new president before a lot of today's ticket buyers actually see the show that they, they have tickets for. Is it possible to take a show like this on the road? When I think of the theater well, preparation... That's, that's a good question, because it costs so many millions of dollars just to set it in this theater with the in incredible effects that if they want to take it on the road, they have to find a way to produce it that won't require that expense and that can move quickly in and out of the theaters in smaller towns. There's a real challenge, but it does have stunning effects. Thank you, Bob.